So it depends how mature they are. You deal with them based on that. And if you start to explain something to your kids like this and they don't understand, you don't get frustrated with them because you know they're kids. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. So same thing is with these people. If they don't have that level of awareness or consciousness, then you, wanna, you want to imagine you're talking to children. Uh, not as far as not getting frustrated with them that they don't understand what you're saying. So it doesn't matter how old they are, you want to imagine that you're talking to kids in the level of consciousness and awareness in this level. So their awareness still has not caught up with their physical age. So you talk to them like that. You, to whatever extent they can understand. And sometimes they don't understand the words. So it's frustrating, or if you're trying to explain things to them, they may think you're trying to teach them things and they may not like it. So a lot of times I speak of my own experience with my family. They're not interested in hearing anything like this. So all I do is I'm just available there. I don't say anything. I'm just available, I'm quiet, I'm calm, I'm in my center. They don't know why they feel good when I'm around. They want me to be around them most of the time because what I do is I bring calmness. I bring peace to the house. And that's how I'm transmuting this awareness to them because this is as much as they can get. Thank does, you it make any, does this make any sense to you? Very useful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So Just be, be present and be available. Sometimes they're going through, like right now, maybe they're worried about this and that, and oh my God, da 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 da, da. let's buy masks, let's do this, da 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 da. And I'm just there. I'm just loving. I don't say anything. And, uh, that has an impact for them or maybe they go through their issues and they're suffering from some drama and they're telling me their drama and i can easily help them to overcome it but they're not open to me so i just listen i say yes i understand i understand i get it i understand but one question uh, one question when when it comes to like something let's say it's a per, uh, other person have like too much like trauma and pain inside and and like i'm very sensitive person so i i'm like at some point like i start to feel the same so how um be uh understanding to to other person but not take his pain to yourself i mean not leave it right well it's like anything in life you you're available you're there but you're not connected, you disconnect from the drama. So you come back into your presence, you come, your attention comes back, instead of going to their drama and their story, you come back to the center of yourself. And when, when you do this on a regular basis, you're at peace and calmness and nothing can touch you. Because what can touch my inner peace? If I've discovered inner peace, what can touch it? I'm the only person who can disturb it. The news from the outside cannot touch that because it's not penetrable. So you bring your attention inside yourself. You bring your attention to your inner silence. Then you're at peace. Now, everything has limits. Yeah, sometimes, you know, you're somewhere and it's very crazy, very um, chaotic. So you just simply leave. You don't have to be in a toxic environment all the time. If you can leave, you leave. But while you're there, you stay in your own center. Okay.
Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're Brad. welcome. You're welcome. You. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Too. Anybody has any questions for me? Hi, Uti. Hi, Salatus Kirsten. Nice to see you. Nice My to meet you. Thank you. My question is about um, the state when we left the body. Um, when we um, when we are melting with that big light, that's a great soul. Is there any individuality left? Have we a consciousness about our soul then? Have you understood? But, yeah. Is there any individuality left when you merge into the one yes. oneness? Yes. Right. Yes. So if I have a mm -hmm. glass of water and mm -hmm. I pour this water into the ocean, what mm -hmm. happens to the water? Then I would say there's no individuality left. Exactly. Mm -hmm. it, it dissolves into the ocean and it becomes the ocean. But you have to understand one thing. This is ocean here. And what it seems to be individuality is the characteristics of the ocean in it. What seems to be individuality is an expression of the absolute. God wants to pretend it's you. It wants to play this game with itself, that it's you. And then it wants to pretend that it's me. And of course, I have certain character characteristics and you have certain characteristics. It's all expressions of the same one. There's only one of us here and that one likes to play these different characters. So when it comes to final moments that you dissolve back, whether you in, get enlightened and your consciousness emerges into God consciousness, yes, there's the appearance of the person. Anyone that has come to a state of enlightenment, they still have their body, they still have their character, and they do what they were doing before, maybe, or whatever but their consciousness has merged into the oneness. Now, when you die and you go to the other side, you, the water is poured back into the ocean. So, but when you're born, it is the ocean water that they poured it into the glass. So it was always that thing. It was never separated from that thing, okay? Yes, thank you. Can I can I ask one thing more about that? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, when you reincarnate, then you have maybe a consciousness um, that um, is remembering the past lives. Yeah, but whose past lives? You don't know when you're you're going back into the ocean of consciousness, mm -hmm. and then when they're they're making you and they, they stick the, the glass yes. into the water and they pick it up, yes. you don't know whose, whose memories you're getting filled up with. But when you incarnate to a body and you have a sense that you're separated, you have a sense that you are incarnated and all the memories you have, you think they're yours. Mm -hmm. It appears to be you are someone separated, uh, my dear sister. It's an appearance. It looks like it. It's part of the game. Part of the game is that you think and feel that you are a separated individual. That's exactly designed by God. God itself wants you to think and feel that way. Otherwise, you know the truth and you won't play the game. So this is like you and I and two other kids, we're going to play a game of cards. 
it's a monopoly or something. It's a game we're playing together. While you're playing the game, we know we're playing the game. We can walk out of the game at any moment. But when we're playing it, we, we identify with the characters of this game only during the game. And this is what's happening right now here. When you recognize, realize who you are, you know you've been playing this game. And the game is ha harmless. It doesn't harm anybody because you're playing it with yourself. When you were kids, did you play like cowboy Indians or did you play nurse and patient or whatever? Did you play any games when you were a kid? with your toys yeah so you're in your bedroom by yourself you're playing playing these things aren't you both characters or four different characters don't you become these different characters yeah yes. yeah and you may be playing the game for two three hours and after two three hours you're just lost into the game your mom comes and knock on the door and says honey Dinner is ready, go wash your hands and come to dinner. And then, and then you leave the game, you go wash your hands and you go have, have dinner. And you leave the characters there. And you become you again. What happened to those characters? Where do they go? They were happening in your imagination. You were imagining those four characters. They don't go all four of them with you to dinner. You leave them there and you come and have your dinner with your mom. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you go back and continue that game or maybe you go back and do your homework and go to bed early. And a day, next day or two days after you go back to that game. And this is what's happening here right now. Okay. Interesting. Right. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Start you. looking at life from this angle. Start looking at it this way. And you will see the truth beyond everything. You begin to see there is no other there is no other one there is no enemy there is no virus there's nothing to come and threaten you because that thing is an aspect of yourself it's god playing this game with itself it's been playing this game for thousands of years but every time you sleep and you don't dream the game is not there anymore when you sleep and you're not dreaming, this whole creation disappears. It's not there. And then when you wake up and the first thought comes in your mind, I, I am, I am someone, I am Zarathustra, I am separated, then everything reappears. The game comes back. Thank you very much for joining me. And I look forward to seeing you. Stay in your center. Bring your attention inwards and know that all is well and there's nothing to fear. Our maker, the creator, takes care of the creation. God bless you all.